Hi, uh, welcome to session six. Um, and uh, in this se in this session, we are focusing on uh, terms of reference for evaluation. Uh, and um, uh, we will also, of course, uh, as as part of the the terms of reference, is um, uh, having a good uh, uh, team that is uh, evaluation team that is uh, uh, well qualified to do the the, the evaluation exercise uh, uh, success successfully. So, <clears throat> in this session, of course, this is an addition to the previous session uh, regarding preparation for equity forecast and general responsive evaluation yes yeah, so uh, we are adding to the uh, to the previous steps that we discussed which included um, uh, evaluability assessment um, uh, uh, finding challenges and uh, and and, and uh, so on and so on so uh, in this session, we are looking at uh, uh, developing uh, terms uh, of reference and then uh, we look at selection of who does evaluation, in other words, the evaluation team. So, again, reminding ourselves, uh, uh, we have our uh, sequential structure here <coughs> adopted from um, uh, uh, UN Women 2015, uh, which looks at the steps uh, for equity focused evaluation of gender sensitive evaluation um, or gender responsive evaluation uh, that begins with planning, uh, preparation, then goes to implementation, then uh, reporting, and then use and follow up. So, again, we are still on preparation and digging further to developing. Uh, uh, terms of references. So again, reminding ourselves that uh, while preparing for evaluation, we begin with appointing the manager uh, who will lead, coordinate, and um, uh, also participate in mobilization and all other activities related to evaluation. And then when you have the appointment manager, then he can also guide and lead the, uh, the assessment of evaluability uh, to determine whether uh, the project uh, or intervention is feasible uh, and the evaluation justifiable, uh, whether the intervention uh, can be evaluated. And then uh, after that, that's when we talked about the stakeholder analysis and engagement. Uh, and we looked at uh, how uh, stakeholders uh, can be identified and analyzed to be able to participate in the evaluation process and looked at the benefits of uh, having them uh, engaged uh, in evaluation processes. And then uh, thereafter, we also uh, took uh, a look at identifying the, the users and uses of evaluation, uh, where uh, the, 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 the preparation uh, on mainly focuses on, on who will use the evaluation and for what purpose. So, and then we looked at also some of the potential challenges that might affect or impact the, uh, the uh, affect equity focused and gender responsive evaluation. So, our next step in the preparation stay, uh, phase, uh, after following these other ones, uh, comes uh, the development of, of um, uh, terms of reference. Uh, which are, is, is also uh, a main uh, a prerequisite for uh, preparation of uh, evaluation uh, process. So the terms of reference. So successful development of terms and of reference uh, depend on one, the management commitment to define purpose, scope, and the focus of evaluation. The purpose in terms of why the evaluation is needed scope in terms of uh, timing uh, scope in terms of evaluation of on on, on um, geo geolocation um, uh, scope in terms of thematic content that would be covered scope in terms of of, of uh, coverage of, of of the 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 
the intervention, for instance, what aspects are, are, are going to be uh, covered, scope in terms of target uh, uh, groups of, of, for evaluation, and other kinds of scope. So also a focus of evaluation in terms of whether it is um, uh, uh, basically aiming at looking at equity and also uh, looking at gender uh, integration within the evaluation uh, processes. Successful of um, development of terms of reference also, uh, I mean terms of reference for gender responsive and gender uh sensitive or equity focused evaluation uh successful development of terms of, of such uh evaluation would also depend on the ability to grow to develop well thought uh, uh terms of reference of course that depends on the manage management uh, again the management commitment and uh, uh critical thinking on um how uh the, the terms of references would be it also depends on uh, management to decide and influence gender responsive and equity focused evaluation because if the management does not take a decision on that then uh, evaluation would be just generalized looking at uh, the general beneficiaries rather than categorizing them into subgroups to get uh, different versions of reality that would uh, therefore depict how people are benefiting uh, or not benefiting depending on uh, different circumstances okay uh, it would also depend on the willingness to seek help in developing uh, terms of reference um, uh, if the capacity is limited indeed uh, because you'll find that yes sometimes yes you have the manager management leading you have the team but the team might not have enough capacity or uh, the capacity should would might be limited in terms of uh, developing the terms of references and therefore the willingness of management to hire or uh, consult uh, the experts to help in development of the, the TOR uh, would be also necessary to a prerequisite for successful development of terms of references. So what is, uh, why do we need terms of references and what are they for? Uh, of course, uh, it's, it's uh, uh, as a guide for evaluation, terms of reference uh, defines uh, why evaluation is uh, being undertaken uh, and therefore, in this case, defining for those who will carry out the evaluation, uh, what the evaluation will assess, um, how evaluation will be done, um, could be in terms of methodology and different approaches, when evaluation will be implemented, uh, so so that the, the evaluation team can can be um, can know in advance when uh, certain evaluation activities might uh, should take place according to uh, the the plans uh, of management. Uh, but also the terms of reference define who will use the evaluation. Uh, so again, this refers to refer back to the, the the what we talked about in the in the in the previous session on the identification of users and the the the, the uses of the evaluation and then uh, the terms of reference also define how the evaluation be, will be used okay so basically if the the if such answers are provided for all these uh, uh, questions then you have a full package of your terms of reference that the the consultant or the team that is going to do evaluation can rely on uh, to do uh, the evaluation, uh, the equity focus and gender uh, focused evaluation. So the terms of reference uh, package in involves uh, many aspects and many components and uh, some of them uh, would include description of the program or project. So in other words, the background, uh, what the project is about, uh, who are the target corporation uh, who are involved, uh, what the, 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 the goods and services or intended outcomes uh, are, uh, what the purpose is, the objectives, and so on. So all that description of the project, even including even location and, and, and the rest. Uh, the terms of reference also have a component on evaluation purpose uh, and, and of course efficacy of the, the evaluation. So the, the, it, the the evaluation purpose gives a description of uh, why the evaluation is needed 
by the organization. It could be that they want to test efficiency uh, and evaluation uh, effectiveness. It could be that they want to to, to see whether the, in, the the evaluation whether I'm sorry whether the the, the intervention is uh, equitably um, uh, producing outcomes among different groups or whether the the evaluation is gender sensitive. Or, uh, or or whether the the, in, the intervention is gender sensitive or equity focused, or whether the the there is success in addressing the 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 original uh, problem. So all that is described under the component of evaluation purpose. There is also evaluation objectives, uh, and therefore looking at the criteria and the key questions of. Uh, what evaluation uh, should cover and uh, uh, for what purpose. It also talks about uh, the scope. I have been talking about scope of evaluation. Could be thematic, uh, could be geographical, could be uh, the, the aspects of the intervention that are needed to be covered. Uh, maybe not entirely everything, of course. Uh, could be um, scope in terms of, of timing. Of course, timing is also uh, very, very important. There is also evaluation design, which looks at processes and methods. And therefore, uh, in here, uh, the terms of reference are referring or describing what kind of methods are needed um, or research or evaluation design that is needed. Is it mixed, mixed method design? Is it qualitative? Is it quantitative? Uh, how, will, how will the, the data be collected um, from, from uh, participants? within the evaluation uh, how will um, all other stakeholders be engaged to correct uh, the evaluation information that is needed it also talks about stakeholder participation uh, where uh, for instance we've talked about uh, identifying stakeholders and how they can be engaged um, and therefore the terms of reference describe what kind of participation levels of participation who will participate uh, during evaluation process, at what stages will they be engaged, and then also for what purpose are they being engaged uh, in, in this case. The terms of reference also talk, talk about uh, the time frame. The time frame in terms of how long and when the evaluation should be um, done and when are the deliverables of the evaluation should be uh, delivered uh, in terms of uh, maybe comprehensive reports about the entire process of evaluation when they should be uh, delivered to management for further action. Um, could be uh, annual, could be uh, biannual, could be quarterly, could be monthly, so, the, so that the evaluation team knows when to report concerning different aspects of, of uh, evaluation. There is, of course, the, it also describes the expected uh, deliverables, could be reports, could be um, uh, monthly journals, could be. So all those are kinds of, uh, of uh, deliverables that, they, they, that are expected from the equity and gender focused evaluation uh, that evaluation team is expected to, 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 to deliver or the outputs of the evaluation if you will uh, it also looks at who how man, how evaluation would be managed who's responsible for what and whose role are they to uh, to design to implement and also uh, of course to 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 review uh, certain methodologies or uh, management of, of information um, and administrative information concerning issues of privacy uh, and keeping information safe uh, regarding how uh, data will be entered and so on, uh, including reporting and how certain information would, should be disseminated or kept um, uh, from s certain specific stakeholders if the management decides to. The evaluation, the uh, terms of reference also look at team composition in terms of skills and experiences, of course, and this is what we're going to talk about next uh, in a moment, uh, because the, the t terms of re reference also talk about the kind of expertise uh, that is needed from the evaluation team if it must uh, do a successful job in terms of experiences, in terms of skills, and in terms of composition, uh, could be in terms, composition in terms of representative or expertise.
and also the terms of, of reference look at ethical code of conduct uh, looking at issues of transparency issues of accountability issues of, of so on for instance if the evaluation team is uh, uh, consultant and therefore it, so much external from the the, the agency then uh, some ethical code some ethical codes must be followed uh, because uh, the management has uh, uh, discretion, discretionary power to, to decide how certain evaluation procedures should be made uh, regarding, of course, uh, putting into consideration the kind of, of operation uh, they are targeting or uh, the kind of uh, stakeholders that evaluation process is uh, involving. So you could find all uh, some of the details of uh, explaining all these components uh, in and in Bambaga and and second, but also the UN Women uh, for further uh, uh, understanding of what is talked about under these um, uh, components. Yeah, so here you have uh, an extract of um, an extract from UN Women uh, looking at uh, investing time in developing uh, terms of reference and therefore giving you an example on of how. Uh, certain procedures of terms of reference can be done. Uh, so you have uh, this was done in in Kazakhstan, and um, uh, it was done uh, between uh, 2012 and 2013, and it's looking about talking about the three decentralized evaluations in Kazakhstan and how uh, it was managed. So um, you could have it. Uh, you could take a look at how uh, such terms of references were, were made. Yeah, so of course it is telling you that much consideration was put into designing the terms of reference uh, for evaluation with special attention paid to the evaluation criteria, evaluation matrix, expected usage, and application of uh, research-based management. And that's the RBM that we're talking about. And uh, the initial draft of the T TOR was prepared by the M and E focal point. Then the program officer in charge of the thematic portfolio, project manager, and the IEO reviewed it prior uh, to sharing with the bro bro uh, broader uh, reference group. So you can see the manage the management of development of, of terms of reference. It's not just about developing it, but it's also about having discussions about it and having it approved. So you can have your time and um, do uh, take a look. Uh, so for instance, uh, here you have uh, a declaration that due to low evaluation capacities available in the region, evaluation or uh, uh, terms of reference, anticipated involvement of senior international evaluator as a team leader, in other words, helping in the uh, uh, in in doing the in developing the terms of references, and that is what we are talking about. Uh, for instance, um, the, the 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 management willing to 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 seek uh, help or from consultants who who are experts in developing uh, the terms of references, so that such a prerequisite can be very well um, and meticulously developed to help a successful, uh, have a successful evaluation uh, process. So you can have, uh, take a look at, at this. So you can find also other uh, extracts of, of examples rather than this um, extract of concerning Kazakhstan uh, and you have other uh, UN engagements regarding uh, certain uh, procedures. Uh, there's some of the tips uh, for developing terms of references uh, for a gender responsive uh, evaluation uh, and this uh, is extracted from uh, UNICEF 2019 and uh, it gives some of the components uh, such as evaluation purpose objectives and content and a tip here is given that uh, tools such as gender situation analysis and gender integrated availability assessments could provide an initial understanding of the gender issues directly linked to the main objectives. So, um, but, and, and, and also under evaluation uh, framework, a tip is given that, of course, an, you could have an active involvement of, of gender identities in the development of evaluation questions. Um, the identities we talked about, for instance, um, 
uh, women and men and so on uh, and this could help to ensure that there are unique perspectives and knowledge uh, that are captured within the evaluation uh, process uh, and therefore helping in the, its usefulness. Uh, concerning evaluation methodology, uh, that for instance, female-only focus group discussions uh, could be conducted by a skilled local woman facilitator uh, to promote more open and frank conversation, rather than having an external evaluator who is a male uh, trying to, um, uh, to to do the assessment, engaging uh, a focus group discussion of only women. In that case, the power issues that we are talking about might come into play and therefore influence what kind of particip uh, particip how participation could could happen or what kind of information that the women are willing to to, to provide uh, in that case so it is very important to consider all those kinds of aspects while uh, doing uh, evaluation or implementing it uh, so uh, as you can see that if there are particularly sensitive questions related to violence uh, only one person per household should be uh, asked to participate in the interviews otherwise you risk you risk uh, uh, creating harm uh, of, of particular members of households if you engage them in in similar uh, groups or interviews uh, and therefore creating more harm and that is an ethical if you look at if you consider the ethical considerations that we we already talked about for instance or those that we can talk about later in this session yes so after developing your terms of references uh, then the next thing is selecting the a technically strong eth and ethically upright and culturally sensitive evaluation team um, which is anticipated to do a perfect job uh, of doing the evaluation yes so that is what we are looking at so we are saying that uh, the composition of evaluation team influences the extent of the focus of the evaluation if for instance uh, the evaluation team is only um, uh, composed of males then it becomes difficult for uh, to generate uh, credible information if the project for instance is looking at uh, is only uh, looking at the empowerment of, of women so the selection of the uh, of the the, 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 the team uh, can be based on uh, areas of expertise uh, it could be gender expertise uh, and therefore having someone who understands uh, local gender norms uh, or regarding how women are expected to behave or how men are expected to, to behave or what they are supposed to do uh, or certain categories of opportunities or challenges that they experience in a certain community. It could also be cultural expertise that uh, uh, individuals uh, or you have a team that is composed of individuals or evaluators who understand cultural norms and values of a certain locality. So uh, uh, evaluators that do um, uh, a team of, of evaluators that do the evaluation in DRC might not necessarily be applicable to do uh, evaluation in maybe uh, Laos or Cambodia or, 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 or Colombia or Indonesia. So because the context, the cultural context uh, differ. So while as, as much as the context changes, therefore the composition of, of evaluation team um, could also change. Um, selection can also be based on expertise on methodology uh, and therefore you have people who are experts in conducting participatory methods or mixed methods or purely quantitative all those are, are different uh, scenarios that you that could be considered when it comes to selection of, of uh, methods also uh, selection could be based on uh, facilitation skills you have evaluators who are not good at fa facilitating uh, maybe focus group discussions uh, they are just good at uh, uh, desk uh, uh, assessment and analysis and therefore you need also to consider uh, such issues um, but evaluation but uh, the evaluation team could also be selected based on uh, representation Representation in terms of uh, could be in terms of people with disabilities. Representation in terms of youth. Representation in terms of poor in, people. In the representation in terms of elderly refugees, uh, people from rural or urban slum areas, etc. Depending on the focus of the evaluation 
on the purpose and objectives of the evaluation. So here you have an extract from uh, UN Women and uh, it gives some of the examples of evaluator skills and competencies um, and could be experienced in conducting gender responsive evaluation. The team could also be have extensive knowledge of and experience in applying qualitative or quantitative uh, in that case, mixed methods. Uh, it could also have experience um, in gender analysis and human rights based. Uh, could also have skills in data data analysis uh, or could have um, technical competence in a sector, maybe health or education or agriculture um, or engineering. It could also be having experience based on uh, geographical location. Uh, that's why you have some of the terms of references for, for instance, for the UN agencies saying that we need evaluation team or consultants agents that has uh, expertise in sub-Saharan Africa uh, or could be competencies in terms of language proficiency that if you need a team to work in um, uh, maybe uh, West Africa, mostly, you need a team that speaks French also. So those are different competencies that uh, one uh, uh, can consider or managers could consider if when they are selecting or trying to appoint uh, a, an evaluation team. And you'll find in most cases for those, who, those of you who are working with uh, uh, refugee or UN agencies, you always have those um, such skills and competencies at, uh, as part of the, the qualifications required from uh, uh, any person who is bidding to do the evaluation of, of, a, of, of a particular um, uh, uh, intervention. So the UNICEF again gives you some tips uh, regarding uh, competencies and so, and uh, one of them is that evaluators carrying out qualitative data uh, correction should have strong facilitation skills uh, to help surface or explore or diffuse potentially, uh, potentially sensitive situations. If, they are, if the, the evaluation team is not well uh, conversant or well experienced in, uh, with facilitation skills, then there could be issues dealing with uh, issues of probing for further information also, uh, since this is done from an interpretive uh, um, uh, point of view. Um, also, it could be that um, the evaluation uh, team could be um, also uh, evaluated regarding the tips could be that where evaluation, large evaluation teams are engaged, uh, consideration should be given uh, to the diversity of team and therefore uh, regarding, for instance, these representation uh, aspects I've talked about could be women uh, represented, re represented people represented with the disabilities, um, uh, elderly represented or poor represented or refugees, depending again on the focus of evaluation. So um, where the evaluation is large, uh, composed of large teams, then you can have a whole diversity of, 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 of different identities or geographical representation, if, if, if you may. Uh, some of the tip, uh, tips to ensure identification of a strong team uh, may relate to consider, consider carefully all the expertise, consult the key stakeholders, um, ensure the terms of reference clearly identifies uh, requirements for evaluators and indicate expectations or deliverables. Uh, you could also, um, a tip could also be on engaging local professionals because local professionals have experiences yeah, in dealing with uh, the local communities, but you, do, you could also consider the overall team suitability uh, in terms of team balance and, uh, and functioning. Um, but while uh, a team is being considered uh, or selected or for evaluation, some of, uh, of the issues that uh, must be um, uh, very important and significantly considered uh, ethical conduct of the team. Uh, for instance, the team should be fairly represented. Uh, 
uh, that if the project is working in a raw setting, then you have representation of all categories of people or subgroups rather than having one uh, group that represents a homogeneous kind of, 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 of group. Uh, ethical issues do with co accountability and transparency, and that's why you'll find uh, the terms of references are even specifying uh, that they want evaluation team or consultant agency or institution that has had experience in uh, dealing with uh, maybe UN agencies, and therefore they track how these people have, how these agencies or evaluators have been able to, to be transparent in terms of reporting or um, accountable in terms of handling resources. Also, uh, issues of integrity, respect for human rights and dignity and diversity, also ensuring uh, credibility and, um, and cultural competence. Um, and so on. You can refer to session two. Uh, we have details on regarding uh, ethical considerations and cultural competencies uh, for more information. So the bottom line is that, uh, of course, effectiveness of uh, executing evaluation uh, depends um, depends on. Uh, how well the team is established and balanced and independent, but also impartial in terms of uh, uh, collecting data, uh, analyzing it, and uh, design uh, and and reporting it for, for uh, better use uh, at the end. And as always, you have uh, some resource resources for reading that could help you to gain more knowledge regarding this particular. Uh, session and more to come. So, thank you.